It was unreal. It was really, I, I don't know a world other than Twitch where I could boast that Barry Gibb from the Bee Gees opened for me. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jamie Hernandez, and this is The Ins and Outs with Mackie, a show about awesome gear and awesome people. We'll be bringing musicians, engineers, podcasters, streamers, and sometimes the occasional Macoid. If you're new to the show, make sure to hit that subscribe button on your favorite platform to get all the latest Mackie updates as soon as they're out. And be sure to check in the description on how you can win a microphone. So our guest today is a content-creating machine. Born in the Philippines, raised in New York, and currently residing in Atlanta, Georgia, this Twitch pioneer is known for live streaming music, along with her online gaming, cooking, hilarious vlogs, and so much more. Using a multicultural childhood to infuse her music, this artist delivers a sound that is truly her own. Here to share her unique journey is Raquel Lilly. Welcome to the show. How's it going, guys? It's good, good, good time. So... You are widely known for your live streaming. However, you first emerged from the medical field. How did this journey begin? Yeah, so, you know, like any other um, young Asian family background, um, it, even though music is a big culture, uh, there's a big music culture in the Philippines, there's a big arts culture in the Philippines, um, the medical field is always something that uh, Filipinos strive to be in. And um, growing up, I mean, my parents are really creative. I come from a very creative family, uh, but nobody ever pursued it as their their profession. So I'm actually a, an anomaly. My brother and I were both creatives and we're the anomalies of the family where we actually ventured off and ended up pursuing music and, and made it our career. But before I was able to do that, I had to find out for myself whether or not medicine was for me. And I went as far as to obtain a degree from UC Davis in neurobiology. And I love it. There's a there's definitely like a a science nerd in me that that I, I fulfilled with that degree and I, I loved studying. And um, but when I when I got out into the real world to pursue my actual career and what I wanted to do for a living, I was just pretty miserable <laughs> in the in the medical field. And not to say that, you know, it's it, it's a, a miserable place to be. But for me, I just had so much creativity that I felt like I was um, stifling in, in the process of pursuing medicine. And I just didn't have time to do it. And I just wasn't happy with where I was at. And I, it, it took me pursuing um, medicine for a few years to realize that that's just not where I belong. And that's that's not really the talent that I was supposed to give to the world. And, and I didn't feel like I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. What advice can you offer other creators who may be thinking of going full time as a creator, but they're kind of teetering that line the way you did? I would say if you are hardworking, uh, motivated and passionate enough to do it, it is content creation in general is not an easy job. I mean, it's you have to be self-motivated. You have to be driven. You have to have so much in you that 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 makes you want to even pursue something that is so wildly um, and vastly different. I mean, when you say content creation, what do you mean? Making YouTube videos, streaming on Twitch, making TikToks. Like, I mean, there's so many avenues. So you really have to be so disciplined to to pursue something like that. So I, I guess if anybody's trying to pursue it, you, you just have to check yourself. Be honest with yourself. Is this something that? Um, makes you feel alive every day? Is this something that you do want to pursue? And if, if the answer is no at all, then, you know, find something with a syllabus that tells you exactly how to, you know, play life, because this is not the job to choose if, if you need someone to tell you what to do. Absolutely. And be ready for it to be hard, right? Just like the medical field. It's, it's 24 seven. For sure. I mean, you're devoting your life to, um, being a creative, and that can mean so many things. Um, I, I mean, you could argue too, uh, trying to pursue maybe being a doctor. Uh, it's, it's, in my opinion, it's a little bit more clear cut as to like, you know, the the escalator that it's, that that you have to step on to become that doctor. You know, obviously, you have to go to school, you have to study, you have to pass exams, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but for something creative, um, especially in music, where they're today in in this day and age where the internet is such like a, a, a tool, um, 
there's just so many options that you can go with and it, it can easily be just as overwhelming as it is inspiring. Totally. So you are one of the first Twitch music streamers and have developed a very loyal following. But I heard you started off as a gamer. Can we talk about that transition and the moment that you realized that live streaming was probably the future of music? Yeah, so at the time I was juggling being on tour and having just freshly quit my job. So after medicine, I was a paralegal for like a very oh, wow. short amount of time to figure out. So basically I was working for a lawyer who, I just ran his entire business. It was a private lawyer and I was his accountant. I was, <laughs> I was doing, like I was writing up all the court documents. I was running his business essentially. <laughs> and um, I learned a lot about how to run my own business there, but it, it was a very short lived endeavor. And, and both of us knew that. Um, but somewhere in between, I actually spent a lot of time gaming and I, and I can't these days because I would devote so much time to, to live streaming and, and music and everything else in between, like keeping up with a business. Um, but yeah, years ago when I first started on Twitch, I, you know, like everybody else, you, you hop on Twitch and you know, it as this live streaming platform, mainly for gaming and for, you know, a month or two, I, I, tried it because I, I started feeling really guilty that I spent so much time gaming. I'm one of those people where if I sit down too much and like, and I'm not doing something quote productive, I get really guilty. So <laughs> I was like, you know what, what's a way where I could just like be really productive and like maybe promote my music too. So what actually, uh, I, I streamed really competitive Overwatch games where I would nerd rage and like, I was just, I was a different person. Like I, I was very competitive and I would actually um, do karaoke songs while I was playing. So that was my whole like shtick. I guess that's what I felt like my niche was, was that I could perform while I was gaming. And then one day I just stumbled upon somebody who was streaming from like middle England in his university, um, playing guitar to like three people. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And I was like, oh my God, like that's what I'm doing, <laughs> except on the road. Like, why don't I do this here? And there really wasn't a place for it on Twitch back then because it was just like a general creative category. So I just, um, I just I started streaming music on a whim. And um, yeah, when I, when I started doing that, I just saw my audience grow much faster at a much more less forced and like more of an or, or, a organic kind of pull. And I just loved this energy. So I just kept doing it. And Eventually, I just, you know, I considered myself a music streamer. <laughs> so from the making of your album in the studio to music videos to showcasing people's songs when you first write them, Twitch has been there along the way. What are a few things you've learned in the process of creating a community for yourself? So, uh, I mean, obviously, my community is everything. I feel like I owe so much to them because I don't feel like my my music would matter that much otherwise like I feel like I've always been I mean I come from a, a background of gaming and 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 having long distance friends and being best friends with people that I game with like I, I grew up playing World of Warcraft um and so like the whole idea of creating friends through video games and this online thing that was always like that feels like home to me so the fact that there was this platform that I could just like do this but with music and and figure out how to kind of infuse the two um felt just really natural. And, um, it's almost like I had a, an instant connection with the idea of speaking to people, you know, and on the internet. And I wanted to kind of take that up like the next to the next level, uh, by playing shows in front of them, bringing them out of their houses. Cause you know, like, like the internet nerd that I am, I, I'm not one that really leaves my house that much unless I have like something I'm passionate about to go to, but otherwise I, I'm a, I'm kind of a homebody. Um, and so because I just have this really strong connection with my audience, I guess that's kind of a goal is to take them along the journey with me, have them be part of the process, have them affect my decisions and what I do with my musical career. I mean, they helped, like you said, they, they, they were with me during the recordings of my when we went to the studio, um, they were with me on my birthday when, <laughs> when I, when I had like a big studio stream and, and I just, you know, between celebrating things and creating things, um, it's almost like if I'm doing it and it's not, and it's not in front of, you know, my, my community, I, I feel like I'm missing out. Like I'm missing out on an experience that I want to have. Wow. 
and they're obviously with you right now. So, so let's talk about your music. In another interview, you talk a lot about the importance of taking the time to find yourself and your musical style. How did you find and develop a sound that would become so uniquely yours? Man, it's an everyday process kind of thing. Like, <laughs> I can't even <laughs> claim that I've like found it, but yeah, it's nice that people like you say that I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I mean, like everybody else, you know, I have influences. I have creative um creative idols. I, I have a lot of friends who push me to be better. I mean, uh, a big part of my sound is my, my band who helped me create this album that I'm about to release. And, um, I wouldn't be the same, uh, musician if, if it weren't for them influencing how I should look at music, how I should play it. Um, and I always strive to put myself in a room full of people who are much better than me because I, I'm always trying to grow and learn. So it's important to me to uh, surround myself with, you know, smarter people, better people, uh, people who keep me motivated, people who inspire me. Um, but yeah, I owe it largely to the, the, just who I, uh, who I choose to hang out with, I guess, and, and submerge my, my ideas with. Um, but also, you know, I guess if we're talking about musical influences, I grew up listening to the Beatles. They were a big reason why I started writing music to begin with. I mean, they're such pro prolific songwriters that I only aspire to be uh, <laughs> a little bit like them, you know. Um, <laughs> but then there are like the different kinds of influences. Like they're my favorite guitar players. They're my favorite singers. Um, I take a lot of influence from old school jazz singers like... Um, like Sarah Vaughn. Um, okay. And then like current jazz singers like Amy Winehouse. And yeah, so I kind of just pick and choose what I like. And hopefully it like sounds cohesive and turns into something that I could perform and create for people. So being a Twitch music pioneer, you got to perform one of your songs in front of 100,000 people at the Stream Aid Festival that involved top acts like John Legend, Ellie Goulding, Garth Brooks, and more. Can you share a little bit about the experience? Oh, man. So <laughs> congratulations, was by the way. Thank you. Thank you. It was unreal. It was really it was ridiculous. Like, I, I, I don't know a world other than Twitch where I could boast that uh, Gary uh, Barry Gibb from the Bee Gees opened for me. <laughs> and then and then, you know, Garth Brooks followed my set like that was wow. just. I, I've never been so nervous to perform in my entire life. And it was like in the middle of my stream room where I do my thing. So yeah, it was insane. Um, I was really grateful for the opportunity because, you know, that was just probably like a month or a month and a half into the pandemic. And, you know, there's so much uncertainty, especially because I was coming from like uh, a gigging world where I was traveling so much to play shows. And um, all of a sudden it was just like, okay, what now? And that was such like an inspiring moment for me where the world was coming together and I just truly saw the, the, the potential that I've always seen in Twitch where music was like this just um, ever inspiring thing that, that, that uh, transcends the, the, the medium that it's, you know, that it's being uh, uh, performed. I'm trying to say that, like, it doesn't matter <laughs> if it was in person or if it was on the Internet. But the fact that that many people showed up for this one thing because everybody's at their house, it didn't stop them from watching the music. It didn't it, it didn't stop them from coming together. I mean, people are, are so uh, easily looking at festivals as like the thing that brings music together. Well, you could do the same thing in the comfort of your own living room, in your PJs or in your underwear or whatever. But um, <laughs> but yeah, it was I guess like I just. I don't know. It's so unreal. Whenever I think about it, I'm like, I can't believe I did that. To this day, I'm just like, John Legend. Oh my God. Like, <laughs> he's like flexing his Grammys in the back. And I'm over here like, doo, 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 doo. hey, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an internet punk, guys. Like, that's amazing. What am I doing here? You know? And, and I read you raised about $1.7 million for COVID relief in that festival. So that is, that's just amazing. It, it works. It just proves that. It works. <laughs> yeah. Music transcends all mediums. Absolutely. So 
Aside from being a talented performer, your fans love you for your authenticity and all the funny content you are constantly bringing into their lives. Why is it important for you to remain unapologetically yourself? Well, there was a time when I tried to remain PG and tried to be a good girl. And, you know, like I just I had this idea of like Twitch is only going to like me if I'm a certain way. And I pursued that for a little bit. And I mean, it, it just was so short lived because um, I guess when I started gaining more of a community and and that was kind of the people that stuck around were the ones who were staying there for the moments where I was slipping up and like F bombing and <laughs> and like, you know, like messing up the songs and and telling trolls uh, like, you know, telling trolls off and whatnot. I guess when I realized that people were craving that like authenticity, that I, I was less scared to um, be myself. So like, for instance, I'm a big uh, 420 uh, um, uh, the word kind of advocate, but connoisseur <laughs> was also popping up in my head. Thank you, advocate. <laughs> and um, there was a while where like I hid that from my community. And it's so funny to think back and being like, why did I ever do that? Like I was I was so scared that, you know, if I wasn't PG or if I wasn't um, palatable to like the general mass, the general, you know, the general public that, you know, I would scare people away. But like I said, I guess it, it kind of came naturally. It's like the more I became myself on the screen, the more people stuck around. And it was just like such a good positive reinforcement to for me to just keep going and, and pursue that instead. So what ways do you think other artists can establish their own opportunities to, to I guess, sort of stand out and and stay active with their with their community? Well, the cool thing about Twitch is uh, you can go into any channel, any music channel, and uh, music is such like a, a personal th experience for people. I mean, if you don't like my music, then you could just find somebody else's music who you could, you know, j vibe with. But um, I think it's really important to just be an authentic version of yourself. And it's especially it's especially important with something like music because you're sharing so something so vulnerable. And when people are watching you live, when they're seeing your micro expressions, I mean, they're going to know. Um, and I think also another thing is if you're having a bad day and you're just not feeling it or whatever, it's so hard to fake that live because your audience knows your community knows you and every little comment that's going to typically not piss you off is going to piss you off take the time off for yourself and, and like step away from it for a second, because the last thing you want to do is, is fake it till you make it because that's not, <laughs> that doesn't, yeah, that, that's not a vibe on stream. <laughs> that's awesome advice though, because people even, even right now I'm sitting here and like, make sure you sit up straight. And you know, it's, it's exhausting to try to stay so perfect all the time. And a lot of that time, that intimidates artists and and it holds For people sure. back from ever posting that first stream or that first song mm -hmm. or that first video. It's like, just do it, you know, get out of your head about it. Yeah. And and you're so natural on camera. And I think it's it's just awesome to wa to watch someone who's as genuine as you to just just be themselves and not make it look like it's so much work. When we do know you, you know, on the side, I I know that you are busting your butt because this is not <laughs> an easy thing to do, creating content, but. You know, when you when you show other people how how you can just be yourself and be relaxed and not feel like you're putting on on an act or anything, you know, it's really powerful to your fans and it, it inspires us and motivates us to want to do the same thing. So thank you for being that artist. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like I'm not capable of doing anything else. Like I have to be myself. I mean, yesterday we were doing, for instance, we were doing a, a sponsor stream and. I was, you know, I'm trying to be PG and like my audience knows it. And we're all like, <laughs> everybody's just like waiting for me to mess up. So it's like, it's, it's cool that we have that kind of synergy, you know, between chat and I, and, and it's cool to develop that sort of relationship with your community. And I, I feel bad for people who really feel like they have to hide themselves because, um, that is something that keeps me going and, and that relationship alone, it helps me get through my day because it's a lot of the time people forget that it is work. You know, this is how I make a living. This is, you're watching me at my job and um, it's cool that I can have fun while I'm doing it. Absolutely. 
So you recently did an unboxing and some giveaways of some Mackie gear. How does it feel to help others begin their careers as creators? Oh, hands down, it is like the, <laughs> just like the juice that keeps me going. I mean, it's this stuff that fuels creativity when you inspire someone. It's pretty, I don't know. Um, it's unparalleled to, to, to be able to, you know, sit on stream and I'm just like playing my songs, do my thing. And then someone walks in and they're like, hey, Raquel, I bought that microphone because of you. Or like, hey, Raquel, what's the gear that you use? Because like, this sounds amazing. Or people even coming in and being like, you inspired me to pick up my guitar for the first time in years. And I'm like, I'm just in shock that people, I don't know, uh, value me that much. And I'm just a girl in her basement playing music. <laughs> it shocks me every time. And, and it's this, like I said, it's, it's the juice that keeps me going, you know? Well, speaking of, of setups, how did you go about figuring out a setup that worked for you? Um, that's an ever evolving thing. My setup, I always feel like no matter how natural you, you say I am, and no matter how professional this looks, <laughs> I always feel like the little piggy that's like built the house with straw, you know, because like, I feel like at any moment something can break, <laughs> but everything is just like trial and error. You know, I mean, some of my most like professional streams, like my, I don't know, my, my, my audio interface just cuts out or like the camera falls over or, you know, like there's a, everything. And I, I bet you streamers feel this way. It's like, you kind of got to keep keep up with um, what's current and your lighting's got to be on point. And a lot of people forget that it's one person typically who, who sets this all up. So um, how I went about creating my, I guess, setup is just guest test and revise. And if something breaks, then you put a crap ton of duct tape on it <laughs> you hope for the best. <laughs> As so, long as it looks good and nobody sees the mess that's underneath me, then we're, we're chilling. We're chilling. Well, that's great advice. How, wh what's some advice that you can offer creators who are just intimidated by the gear aspect of it all? So people are always like, how do I start? Like, what, what is the best gear? It's like, I am such a bad example of that because what you need to do if you just want to start is literally if it's just you and your laptop and you know you don't even have a microphone just just hit just hit record whatever it is just hit cord a record or just start streaming or turn the camera on turn your cell phone on just do it because you can get so hung up on spending money and um getting stressed out about like oh i'm i'm not going to be the best but the truth is you're not going to learn how to be the best until you kind of Throw yourself to the wolves. You throw yourself into the the pile of hungry wolves, <laughs> you know. And that that's what streaming feels like. Is like a lot of content creators are always like super cutting edge. I mean, we're on top of the meme game. We are the 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 forefront of the the internet army of memes. Um, <laughs> and so to try to try and tell yourself that you need to keep up with that is just daunting. And yeah. you just need to hit live. I love it. You hear that? So hit live. Just put it out there. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be sharing one of your performances later on. Is there any new music we can look forward to? I know you've been releasing like crazy and writing like crazy. Yeah. Um, well, I was supposed to release an album this year, but, uh, you know, a lot of stuff happens. Anyway, I'm releasing my album in early 2022. Um, and you can expect a new music video to drop, which my brother actually is working on as we're speaking. Um, he lives in the Philippines. He is a creator and uh, director in the Philippines. And he I'm super excited about that because that's where I'm I'm born. And I've always wanted to kind of give back to my my community there. And this was a perfect opportunity to do that. And he's hired a you know a full Filipino cast, um, a full Filipino production company. And it's just it, it feels really good to be able to to work with with people back home, especially awesome. my brother. That is too um, awesome. I also have the album dropping um, after that. And then I'm also dropping a single early on next year. So expect a lot after the holidays, guys. Takes. Takes. So now it's time for our ins and outtakes, which is a rapid fire of random questions. Are you ready for that? 
Absolutely. All right. Raquel, who are some of your favorite artists you have worked with? I worked with. Okay. Um, so I just played a show with my new favorite band. They're called Cannibal Kids. Absolutely insanely talented people. And uh, they're great. Um, uh, oh, God. Uh, pressure, pressure. Um, <laughs> I honestly, I collaborated. I, I collaborate a lot with my friends. Uh, there's a um, a rapper named Coop Six. Um, he's phenomenal. Um yeah, does that, you you asked who collab right? Cool. Yeah, or who your favorite artists you've worked with? That works. How do you prep for your shows? <sighs> I roll out of bed and I hope I did my makeup right, and then I turn <laughs> on the lights and I hit live. Honestly, um, that's awesome. Yeah, I wish I was lying, but that, <laughs> that's literally how it goes. I'm so busy with every minute of the day. I'm I'm doing something, and I I struggle to just keep up with my own schedule, but you know, that's, that's usually how it goes. Well, you're doing a great job. You make it look easier than I'm sure it is. Thanks. So you have been a performer since you were very young. What is your earliest musical memory? Uh, I remember being like four years old and my parents were always so adamant on turning me into like this little, I don't know, like yeah. back then YouTube didn't exist, but like this little stage star, you know, <laughs> where they could take me around um, and, and show me off to their friends. So I remember they made me learn this song Wooden Heart by uh, Elvis Presley. Okay. And that was like my one trick pony when I was four. So they'd take <laughs> me to all these like family events and big parties and they'd put me on stage and I'd be so scared. And I was so introverted as a kid that like it, it was so scary, but I knew that if I memorized it and did it right and people clapped, like then it was fine. So yeah, I, I've been on the stage for pretty much all my life. When look at you now, pro. <laughs> Internet pro. Internet pro. <laughs> you are a huge fan of the Beatles. Which Beatle would you make an album with if you had the chance? Okay, so growing up, I would have said John Lennon, but when I you know, in my adulthood, I actually realized that I like more Paul songs than anything. <laughs> so, I mean, considering that Paul's still alive, I hope one day I could still catch him. Um, or they can cryogenically freeze him or something and I could write <laughs> with his brain because he's absolutely brilliant. The first oh time gosh. I ever saw Paul and the I mean, hopefully not the last, but ACL a few years ago. I cried when he came onto stage. It was like watching uh, someone like a god walk before you. Yeah. I, was, I was bawling. <laughs> All right. So you have a name for your guitar. What's your guitar's name? So my first guitar is called Gretchen. Um, she's the one right there that's the silvery green. I have another guitar called Eve. And then I don't know, honestly. Oh, and another guitar named Whitney. Um, she's oh. my white Gretsch. Yes. And um, my latest guitar I haven't named, actually. I I don't know. My chat's been, my, my community's been um, pressuring me to name her for quite some time now. And <laughs> I just, I don't know. It'll come when it comes, you know? I love it. So you hold a degree in neurobiology, physiology, and behavior. Have those skills ever been put into effect or benefited you in developing and managing the expectations of an internet community? <laughs> yes. Yes. Actually. Um, I mean, a lot of what you have to do is like, uh, community management, you know? And I think the fact that, uh, I know so much about like just nerdy brain things that if, if, for instance, like a troll comes in and usually they're there to ruin your day, you know? And then in two seconds, you either have to react angrily or not angrily, but I think having a degree in like knowing how serotonin and all those like chemicals work in your brain and why people do things and just having basic knowledge of that keeps me calm and makes me realize like, look, they're just human. This is what you studied. Like it's, it's no different than, than apply just because they're dissing you in the moment doesn't mean that, you know, like it, it shouldn't mean more than what you already know about why people get angry or, you know, so it, it, it definitely helps level me for sure. That's but also it's, it's really cool because I get to be nerdy with my community. Like if, if we, you know, they know that every time we talk about something like, um, I don't know, psychedelics or 
something that really piques my interest, I'm able to just like talk about what I study, talk about what I, I, and I still keep up with um, scientific literature. That's kind of like, kind of like a side thing that I like to stay on top of. And um, it's really cool to just share all those little tidbits of information in that community. If you could tell your younger self something, what would it be? Um, just relax. It's all going to work out. <laughs> I think, um, I had, you know, everybody has the, the whole, what am I supposed to do with my life crisis? Um, but if you told me that I was going to hang out on the internet with a bunch of, you know, buddies and, and just have a stupid time every time, um, I, I wouldn't believe you. I would not believe you. So I think I would go back in time and if I could use the least amount of words, I'd be like, chill, dude, it's going to work out. (laughs) Amen to that. What's better, being a big fish in a small pond or a small fish in a big pond? I think being a big fish in a small pond because I am somebody who really likes to um, be personable. I'm, I'm not really someone who surrounds myself with like, I don't have tons of like friends. I don't, I, although I love going to parties and all that, I'm kind of one of those like one-on-one. I really like to spend quality time with people and it gets overwhelming if it's, uh, too much. So I think I naturally gravitate towards big fish, small pond. Um, but then there is also a side of me where I definitely want to, you know, be that smaller fish in a big pond, um, perhaps especially with my music, um, just just because I want to touch and inspire as many people as I can. And if that means being a smaller fish in a bigger pond, then I'm down. I love it. So finally, who would play you in the movie of your life? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, my community always says two, so two people that people that my community always says I like look like or act like or whatever. So we'd have to uh, give Jennifer Lawrence a spray tan (laughs) and dye her hair purple. Um, Apparently I remind people of her. Um, And then people also say I look like Tia Carrera for who's Cassandra from Wayne's world. Um, She's badass. (laughs) Yeah, she is. I love her. Oh my goodness. So if we, if we could take either one of those, that will work. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So anything else you want to share? Websites, upcoming shows? Yeah, so I'm playing a show in Miami um, at the end of October. So if you guys want to come see me live or if you want to hang out and chat and, and watch me stream it, I'm streaming it live from my friend um, Daza Studio. It's called Electric Air Studios. But we're going to be selling tickets pretty soon. So if you want to come catch the show in person, you can do that. But um, the experience is just going to be as intimate and ridiculously cool um, on the 29th. So if you guys want to save that in your calendars, I would love for you to be there October 29th, live stream or in Miami. What about your rat coins? I know that gives a lot of VIP special access. Can we talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So I, um, I dabble in the crypto and I just, (laughs) when I got the opportunity to create my own coin, which by the way, that the coin face is, is this, this is one of my emotes (laughs) on Twitch. I love it. Um, it's called Raquel 420. (laughs) And, um, I honestly, like right when I got the opportunity, a friend of a friend was like, Hey, you want to be part of this thing? I was about it because anything that I could do to give more to my community while at the same time, like, you know, funding my business and and helping me grow as a creator is a win-win to me. So, um, yeah, Ratcoin is, is, um, a really cool way to support me. I mean, it's besides giving me uh, subscriptions on Twitch or straight up donating through PayPal, Ratcoin is just another currency, um, and different angle where you, you could number one, gain some, uh, uh, gain some access to like, let's say like merch early on, or you could actually like win a discord dinner with me where we both cook and we just hang out and chill. So it's, I'm trying to just, it's a way for me to get closer to my community, but also at the same time, give them something to, um, to purchase and, and, and feel more connected to, to my world as well and, and participate in the whole crypto universe. 
Let's talk about your peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> You're you guys are deep diving. I dive deep. deep. I do yeah, my research. Yeah, man, I'm I am impressed. Thank you. <laughs> so you make peanut butter and you sell it. Yes, yes, How I do. How did that start? So I love food. That's how it started. Um, I also started just, I don't know, I've, I've always been obsessed with peanut butter and um, I've always wanted to make peanut butter. It's just been a weird dream of mine where I'm like, one day I'm going to make my own peanut butter. Um, <laughs> and when I realize I can make it in semi bulk, I mean, I'm only one person and I only have like one little machine. So I don't know. I, like I said, I, I really like sharing personal things with my community. So Somebody just kind of threw it out there like, you should sell it. And I'm like, no, but wait. <laughs> um, and yeah, when the overwhelming response was like, I'd buy one, I'd buy one, I'd buy one. I'm like, okay, now I got to make all of it. And yeah. oh God. And, you know, so that's that's kind of how it started. Like I started selling it. I I would show it on my Instagram and I'd be like, guys, I'm making peanut butter. And so many people would be like, sell it, sell it, sell it. <laughs> and I was just peer pressured, man. Like, Okay. <laughs> How awesome and unique. Like no one else is out there doing that. So I love that you just like jumped on, on the opportunity. <laughs> well, great. Yeah, it's, so it's, it's the uh, the brown girl in me that likes to hustle, to be honest. <laughs> I'm like, you want to buy this? All right. What else? What Can, can I sell you pens? Like what? <laughs> <laughs> Anything. I mean, it's a full time job, what you're doing. Yeah. You got to find is. all the little routes and outlets. So before you go, who do you think we should invite onto the podcast next? Oh man, there's so many talented Twitch artists to even name. I mean, beyond well, throw even some names. Just... Okay, so um, Anel Stahl is really cool. Um, she is a recent friend of mine. Her and I are actually playing that show together in Miami. Um, and Matt Walden is another person that I met this year who's super, super cool. Uh, both of them are songwriters, very driven, have, have got their businesses figured out, have got their audiences figured out. Um, Samuel Tucker Young, Megan Lenius, uh, just Anna Carmella. Uh, I'm, geez, I'm friends with so many Twitch streamers. Um, yeah, the list goes on. Honestly, if you guys want to ask me, I, I would gladly give you a list. All right. Joshua well, Wu, Mermaid Unicorn, Kyger. Yeah, chat's helping me out too. Shout outs, shout outs. We love it. Anything else that you wanted to share? Thanks to your fans for joining us today. That was so awesome. Um, well, you know, turn on those alerts, guys. I always do random things like this, as you know. I'm a musician, so my 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 schedule's kind of all over the place, but I appreciate you guys tuning in whenever you can. So uh my next single that I'm releasing is called A Do, and it's really about just um biding your time and and not getting hung up on when the next time's gonna be when you see somebody or um, getting too hung up on, well, I can't have you forever, or it, it's, it's really just about rejoicing in the moment and, and, and really appreciating the moment that you have together. And yeah, it's called a do. Just 
much Raquel you've been awesome I've, I've loved meeting you today and good luck with everything that you have going for you I appreciate that once again I'm Jamie Hernandez and this is the ins and outs with Mackie a show about awesome gear and awesome people we'll be bringing musicians engineers podcasters streamers and sometimes the occasional Macoid if you're new to the show make sure to hit that subscribe button on your favorite platform to get all the latest Mackie updates as soon as they're out and be sure to check the description on how you can win a microphone until next time Macoids thank you guys so much for having me Thank you so much. <laughs> that was so awesome. Thank um, you. Thank well, this you. That is was fantastic. Yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, blown away. Mm -hmm. Guys, I'm making peanut butter and. <laughs> <laughs>